we're going to go right into this and I'm going to establish the rules of bum, 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 killer theories, final killer theories for MTV Scream. Okay, here are the rules. Pay attention. Here we go. You can pick two killers, two killers, two choices, but you can only pick two. If you want to pick one, sure, that's fine, but do not pick more than two. You only get two picks. This is what makes it fun. This is what makes it fair. You get two picks and just please to be nice to me i'm only one man and this is awesome but it's getting a little bit out of hand just please we'll continue our conversations on other videos and send me maybe some stuff on twitter if you want to follow us on twitter facebook all that stuff please just just comment my final killer theory is and put your two picks this way i can keep track and you can get a shout out on uh, killer congratulations at the very end please just comment that okay anyway so I am going to this is also very important pay attention to this I'm going to stop taking the comments on Tuesday August 9th at 10 p.m. that's when the next episode starts so if you're listening to this on Tuesday August 9th at like 9 30 stop listening to this write down your killer theories because after that it's over it's done that's when I'm tallying the votes that's when I'm calling everything I'm doing it right now because after all the debating of last time, there are only going to be 12 episodes. I know that Audrey and Noah's Twitter or Instagram or whatever said that there were going to be 14. This has basically been proven to be false. They thought there were going to be, but then either low ratings, they knocked it down to 12 or blah, 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 blah. But, and I think the Scream After Darks were put into the production budget too. And so they thought those were actual episodes when they were really just the Scream After Darks anyway. There are only going to be 12 episodes, so we're doing it now. And then next week and the week after that, I'm going to be doing the full recaps, everything of the episodes. So anyway, let's get right into it. All right, usually on these podcasts, what I do is I recap the entire f***ing episode. Not going to do that this time. I might do another video separate where I go through every single f***ing moment of uh, episode 10, The Vanishing. But I'm not going to do that right now. There's too many jokes that I include in those, and this ain't no time for jokes. This shit, serious. It don't get more serious than this. Final killer theories. Okay, just to let you guys know, I'm going to be jumping around a little bit here and there, you know. Um, there are chapters in the description of this one, so feel free to jump around, but trust me, don't, uh, because you'll miss something, and then you'll, like, comment and be like, hey, you missed this part, or you didn't cover this part. Yes, I did. You just skipped over it. So, I'm going to cover my final killer theories, I'm going to cover some little side bits and pieces, and I'm going to tell you the entire backstory of why I think these two people are the killers. To jump right into it, we're just going to barrel right in. Mike's final killer picks are 1. Kieran. Pom pom pom. Crazy, I know, right? Who would have ever thought? And 2. This is going to blow your mind. 2. Is Zoe. Boom. Okay, hold on. Don't don't turn this off. Don't turn this off. Don't think I'm crazy. Don't turn this off. I have my reasons. They're going to blow your mind. And I'm going to take you for a little trip on this. Let me tell you. Uh, so hear me out. Everybody's already being like, Oh, Mike's crazy. Blah, blah, blah. Because, spoiler alert, if you didn't watch the episode, and who's listening to this who didn't watch the episode, but Zoe died. Wah, wah, wah. Very sad. Yes, yes, yes. This is very sad. However, who else has died in a movie. Let's just pick a random character who's died in a movie before, totally died. Uh, how about Billy in Scream? Oh yeah, that's right. He didn't actually die in Scream, did he? No, he came popping back up, didn't he? Hmm, interesting. Now, do I think that that's where it's going? Maybe, probably not. But it is a little bit silly if she came back because she looked dead as shit to me. But I have that covered and I am totally going to get into that and... Here's a little thing. I expected that to happen. I've mentioned before on this podcast, and I've been waiting for it to happen. I was like, is always going to die in this episode? Because it was the whole thing where it was like somebody close to Noah dies. I'm like, yep, is always going to fucking fake die or, or whatever. But again, I'll get into that. And just like, I'm, don't be surprised if Kieran dies in the next episode. Not that I'm saying he's going to, but don't be surprised if it happened. I wasn't surprised that Zoe died in this episode. Um, but I'll get to that a little bit later. Let me cover something else real quick. Two little things real quick. And then I'm going to go right into uh, why I think that is and all this crazy stuff. And you'll uh, probably believe me by the end of this. Okay, here's the big one. This is why I don't think that it's Eli. Eli was made out to be the big one at the end because basically 
the last person who's incriminated in the episode always ends up being the one that everyone's like, oh, it's that person. And a lot of people have already thought that it was Eli. I'm just going to get all this Eli stuff out of the way. One, Eli, nope, not the killer. Not the killer. Go ahead and pick him if you want to, but he's not the killer. Here's the thing with him. I usually don't watch the promos, but I'm going to start because I just can't fucking handle it anymore. I have to have a little bit of spoilers for me. So anyway, in the promo, it shows that he's at Will's funeral, right? Okay, here's the whole thing I think with Eli. Eli is a good guy. Yeah, he's a creeper, but that's in his nature. He can't help it. He's always going to be a creeper. He was born a creeper. His dad's probably a creeper. Pom, 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 whoever his dad is. But he was born a creeper. He's going to die a creeper. He's a creeper. But I think he's a good guy despite that. I don't like him, but still. Anyway, so he's made out to be such a creeper in this show that it totally can't be true. Now, the thing is, is characters, just in the basis of writing, it would be boring if a character that you met them, they were one way. And when you, like, didn't, when they died or something, they were exactly the same. Uh, characters basically need 180s at a certain point. He's been such a creeper, he's been such made out to be this, like, weird fucking guy, that the if he ends up being the killer, there's nothing to that. That's boring. There's nothing to it. So, his 180, he needs to turn out to be a really good guy, despite the fact that he's a creeper and sneaks into people's houses and stuff. Like, he'll redeem himself by being a really nice guy. How's he going to do that? Because he's the one that knows Kieran is bad. All right, stick with me here. Okay, why was he at Will's funeral? and all this kind of stuff, and why is he going to end up being the good guy? Here's the thing. He knows that Kieran's bad because they grew up together, and he knows knows that Kieran killed dogs in the neighborhood or whatever, and he probably knows at least something or whatever about Kieran's stepfather dying and his mom dying in the car crash, blah, blah, blah. He probably suspected it. So he knows that Kieran came to Lakewood, right? So then he starts hearing that kids are dying in Lakewood, and he's like, I better go to fucking Lakewood, and make sure that Kieran isn't killing people. So he comes to Lakewood, goes to Will's funeral, starts spying on Kieran, right? Kieran wasn't the killer last season. So he goes around and makes sure he finds out Kieran isn't the killer. Okay, boom. Then his uh, creeper ass goes home. Then when he came back in this season, he just wanted to get away from like his trashy mom's uh, trashy or boyfriend or whatever. So he comes back. He doesn't know that there's new killings. Nobody does, right? Okay. Uh, He just wants a fresh start. So, then the new killings start, and he doesn't suspect Kieran anymore because he suspected Kieran once, and he was wrong, so he doesn't really suspect Kieran anymore. But after a while, he's like, yep, no, I, I gotta start investigating him again. And people are going to say, it's like, oh my god, it has to be Eli, because what? At the end of the episode, what? He was being any creepier than he ever is? Less so, actually. It's like, but he was standing by that tree big fucking whoop that he was standing by that tree okay here's the thing about that tree if that's supposed to be the same tree that daisy put the messages in that we saw from season one even though it's like you know a new location and everything if that's supposed to be the same tree that she is putting the messages in that she was in the flashbacks of season one da, 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 what else happened at that tree kieran's dad died tied to that tree so Eli at some point has started tracking Kieran right so Kieran keeps going back to that tree where he knows that his father died so Eli's creeper ass is using his creeper knowledge and ninja skills to spy on Kieran and Kieran keeps going back to the tree when he sees Daisy go to the tree the look on his face isn't really saying much. It's just like, oh, he thinks he's she's the killer now or something or blah, blah, blah. He was waiting for the, at that tree for Kieran to come back. He didn't expect to see Daisy, and he's like, why is she sticking notes in this fucking tree? Anyway, let me just wrap that up. Eli's a good guy. Being a creeper is just in his nature. Ain't much else to it than that. Uh, one thing also I wanted to cover real quick, and then I'll get into the whole Zoe thing, is third season, question marks in my notes all over will there be a third season now this is very pivotal to what we're about to start talking about because the ratings are really low right now if they know it's about to get canceled they might be trying to wrap everything up now what this means to this season is that they could have started you know with the a certain killer in mind let's say 
and if they know that they're about to get canceled they're like oh we got to wrap all the brandon troy james stuff up so they might have like changed it because ratings are pretty damn low and so we might get some out of left field like oh god that would suck i just really hope that that doesn't happen but that's a worry of mine that not only are we going to get an unsatisfactory ending to season two we're going to get a rushed unsatisfactory ending to the whole brandon james thing uh altogether so anyway hopefully that doesn't happen but you know we'll see we got to cover that a little bit more in the next episode we'll we'll see how much that story progresses uh moving right on to a section before i get into their whole backstory uh which is killing zoe now there's a movie it was directed written and directed by roger avery who helped write pulp fiction and also did this awesome movie called rules of attraction killing zoe check that movie out pretty ironic here's the thing with zoe one we didn't see her die people never die off screen one if i have this rule with characters in tv or anything it's like if you don't destroy the brain they're not dead that's the reason i wasn't against the idea that jake might still be alive although it's been way proven that jake's dead so sorry about that guys uh which by the way that was awesome that we saw how they rectified the whole piper thing and it was like the last episode where i was like this is bullshit evidently they did find her body they buried it and the person dug it up whatever that was good good enough backtracking i like that anyway so we didn't see her die on screen that's a big thing with me big thing with me i mean the thing is is like branson we didn't see him die on screen either but like let's get technical about tv shows real quick is they didn't want to pay him to be in another episode so they just charred up you know some fake dummy so they don't have to pay the actor to be in another episode Haley, uh, Haley, zoe was in this episode a whole bunch you know like hallucinations in noah's coffin and everything so they had to pay her anyway to be in this episode why kill her off screen why can bother to do that and in such a way that doesn't leave like any marks on her at all she was a beauty queen she wouldn't want her messed up and the killer was like i'm gonna have to like leave her with a open make her have a closed casket and then doesn't do anything to really mess her up now this is all very silly because she was zipped up and she was put into the morgue thing and like not to compare this show to scream queens totally different tone but we all know what happened to boone and shows have pulled that stuff before uh, so don't be surprised if in the next episode someone's like, Oh my god, her body went missing from the morgue. Someone stole it. Stole it. Yeah, okay. Someone stole her body from the morgue. The morgue. The morgue. Get it? Waka, waka, waka. But anyway, I'll get to all that at the um, very end of this story. <clears throat> okay, what I'm about to read for you right here and now is Kieran and Zoe the Backstory. I wrote this and I've been writing this uh, over the course of the last few episodes and usually I try and go a little bit off the cuff but I mean this all got so complicated that I'm literally just going to have to read from this whole story that I wrote but I'm going to break down basically everything that I've written right here right now. This is what Kieran and Zoe's backstory is. Okay so let's start from the very beginning. Piper has a podcast. Audrey is a fan. So is Zoe. She enjoys Noah's podcast the more Zoe does. Where did that podcast come from? Piper's podcast. Noah even said that he co-opted Piper's listeners. So, Zoe and Audrey both liked listening to her podcast. Uh, Zoe was sad. Zoe was depressed. She was looking for somebody to look up to. She chose Piper. So did Audrey. Okay, so they both listened to Piper's podcast, and they both reached out to her. Well, I'm mean, Maybe not Zoe. Um, I actually don't think she did, but... Audrey reached out to her, and Audrey brings Piper to Lakewood. Duh. Anyway, so once she's in Lakewood, um, and they're in the planning phase of the whole thing, Zoe was feeling left out because, you know, Piper wasn't telling them about each other, basically. So, anyway, Zoe was feeling left out, and she was probably, you know, this is why she doesn't like Audrey at all. Um, okay, so here's the thing. This is something that somebody else pointed out too, and this is a very interesting thing, and it's probably true. So, Zoe at that time was also, and this is where it's going to start getting complicated. Zoe was also having an affair with Mr. Branson. Stick with me on all this, it's pretty mind blowing. Okay, so she was having an affair with Mr. Branson. Why do I say that? Because Mr. Branson had sex with all of his cute students. Zoe is cute, she was a student. This is what Mr. Branson does. He looks sketchy all the time no matter what he's doing and he fucks his students. This is Branson to a T. It's probably written on his headstone at this point. Here lies Branson, serial student fucker and all around creep. 
So anyway, let's say Zoe was hooking up with Mr. Branson. Fair enough, probably was. Okay, so he breaks it off with her, or he doesn't tell her about Brooke. She finds out, wants to kill herself. That's the whole thing that she was talking about before. And more specifically, she wants to, let's say, kill Brooke and or Branson. Okay, so she wants to kill Brooke, let's say. Zoe wants to get closer to Brooke so she can do this. So she makes friends with the other smart girl because Zoe's a nerd. She makes friends with the other smart girl who also happens to be friends with Brooke. Who is that? Riley. Okay. Remember at this point that Noah and Brooke were not friends, right? Noah was only friends with Audrey at the beginning of the first season. So, Zoe needs to get close to Brooke. Who does she make friends with? Riley. Okay. <clears throat> so, she makes friends with Riley. Also, this is why Riley's email was used to lure Kevin Duvall, Emma's dad, back to Lakewood. Zoe had her email address, and in some sick way of honoring her, or um, if the whole like Branson thing is true, and it probably is, then she had access to Riley's email through Riley's involvement with the whole malware thing. Okay, so she Zoe has uh, Riley's email. She's either using it because she was friends, or she got it through the malware thing. Anyway, so Zoe makes friends with Riley. Riley talks about it in season one. She's like, oh, I showed Riley the video of Audrey. Okay, so she hates Audrey. So Zoe knows that this will ruin Audrey, so she takes that video that she saw, and she's the one who releases it online. So let's see, spurring the entire series. Okay, so Zoe posts the video, and I mean, I can't confirm this, but this makes Audrey angry, of course. Audrey then jumps the gun, which I think Audrey is much more involved with Piper than she's saying. Audrey jumps the gun on the whole, like, killing thing that they're planning on doing, and she kills who she thinks is responsible for releasing the video, which is Nina. I mean, Tyler was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. So, Audrey kills Nina and Tyler. This pisses off Piper, who then kills Rachel as payback. We found out in this episode that Audrey was with, Rachel, uh, was with Piper when Rachel got killed. Piper's pretty smart. Piper wouldn't have wanted her to know that, so Piper would have been like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to meet with her so she totally won't think, you know, that at the same time that Rachel's dying, and Zoe, you go kill her. That'll be your initiation. So, Zoe went and killed Rachel as payback for jumping the gun. Okay, so Rachel's dead, and Audrey doesn't want to kill people anymore. Okay, so then Piper and Zoe start meeting up more. Zoe takes some, uh, at some point takes Piper's letters that she, Piper received from Audrey, and that's why she has them, and that's how she hangs them up and uses them to taunt her and all this kind of stuff. Okay, so Piper dies. Um, Zoe and Audrey get away with murder. Zoe lays low now that her quote-unquote boss is dead, but she still hates Audrey for killing Piper and ruining their plan, so she thinks of a new plan. She waits for Emma to get back into town, and she's going to frame her for the new murders. But she needs help. She approaches Kieran because she knows his father was killed, right? She tells him she knows who Piper's accomplice was, but that she won't tell him. But the only way that she'll tell him who it is, is if he kills for her. So, Zoe sets Kieran loose on the town. Zoe then begins listening to Piper's old podcast again, hosted by Noah. She develops a crush on Noah like she did in, you know, some fashion with Piper. Noah is close to all the Lakewood Six and, of course, Audrey, so she can't resist getting closer to Noah. Emma comes back into town. Zoe doesn't tell Kieran about the plan to frame Emma, so Zoe makes... Zoe then tries to tutor Emma. Emma misses out, blah, blah, blah. Zoe joins the Lady of the Lake pageant to get closer to Brooke. She dates Noah, which, by process, makes her close to Audrey. So now Zoe is close to four of the Lakewood Six. Once Jake is killed off, and that's probably because Kieran thought he was the accomplice, then the only member that Zoe has never had contact with is, from the Lakewood Six, is, you guessed it, Kieran. Why has she never tried to get in with Kieran? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, anyway, and this is, at the end of this, this is all updated with what happened this episode. Anyway, so, 
She, why didn't she ever bother to get close to Eli or Stavo? Like, never, ever, ever, because they're not part of the Lakewood Six. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Most slashers make the killer the final girl's boyfriend. Um, they will around this this time, too, making Kieran the killer. But in a twist, they'll also have the final boy's, Noah, girlfriend be the killer, which is a pretty nice twist, huh? Anyway, so in the end, Kieran will be find out, found out. He'll say he never wanted to hurt Emma, and that was part of the deal, that Emma could never get hurt. That's why he could have jumped out of that... Um, you know, he could have killed him a whole bunch of times by now. And uh, he didn't, specifically, he didn't come out of the bathroom in the hotel room and kill her. Uh, he had to taunt her because it would make her look too suspicious, plus the fact that, like, Kieran was never after her, the killer was never after her. How do we get scenes where the killer's after Emma? That's where the whole, like, her going crazy and imagining the killer's after her, so uh, I could lay that false trail. So, anyway, and then I have a whole bit where I thought the season was going, and that shit ain't true anymore. But, I'm going to read it for you anyway. Uh, he had to taunt her because it would look too suspicious. He'll cry and Emma will be forced to kill him. No doubt saying, I feel so betrayed. Uh, before anyone else finds out that he's the killer. So, everyone will then enter and find Emma over his dead body. With plenty of evidence pointing to Emma as killer. And none pointing to Kieran or Zoe for that matter. And Emma will be arrested and branded the killer. No one, Audrey won't want to believe it. But there'll be so much evidence that they kind of have to, even though they don't really. To the point where even Emma will probably believe by the end of the season that she was the killer. Like, she's crazy enough. To some degree, she'll believe that she's the killer. She's like, I probably deserve to be locked up. Just let me be locked up. Everyone's like, please just lock her up. Then here's the whole thing. This is all whatever now, but I'm going to read it anyway. Then she'll have a visitor. Noah will show up with Zoe. Zoe will stay behind and tell Emma that she was behind it all. The season will end with Emma in jail saying Zoe was the killer, but everyone thinks she's crazy. Then we'll end with Zoe free, friends with the surviving Lakewood Six, and dating Noah. Okay, so obviously that last bit isn't going to be true anymore. This is the updated version of it, <clears throat> which includes what happened during this episode. Okay, so here's the thing. One thing I want to point out about what happened this episode too, just to point the finger at Kieran a little bit more, not that we really need to, but... What's the one thing that the killer does in this episode that, like, the killer has, like, never done in a slasher before? He calls the cops. Specifically, he calls the sheriff. Why does he do this? Because it's Kieran, and Kieran's been helping the sheriff the whole time. Get it? Like, seriously, listen to that conversation. The killer's like, I want to tell you something. You need to be here, and you need to be there. He's using that whole, hey, I'm helping you out thing against him. Totally, Kieran. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so here's the thing with Zoe. Zoe could be alive. I think that would be pretty lame to pull that trick. So this is actually what I think happened. All right, check this shit out. So their whole plan was, okay, we put Noah in the box. And I've, Kieran is like, okay, I've already put on the mask and, you know, faked my way through it and everybody, you know, and they let me go. Um, so we need to have yours now, Zoe. So what you'll do is we'll kidnap Noah, we'll put him in a box. We'll kidnap you. We'll put you in a box. We'll let Noah out, and we'll let you out. Then, guess that what happens is that um, Kieran's only been under her rule because she's like, I know who Piper's accomplice is, but I'm not going to tell you. What happened at the end of last episode, or at the beginning of last episode, whatever. Somebody sent that audio file to Emma, and guess who was there with Emma and heard that Audrey's the one who brought Piper to Lakewood. Kieran. So, Kieran now knows that Audrey was the accomplice. So, guess who the fuck he doesn't need telling him what to do anymore? Zoe. So, he puts Zoe in the box, and she's like, All right, you're going to take me out of this box eventually, right? He's like, Yeah, don't worry. I'll totally take you out of this box. Just get in it real quick, bitch. Shut up. So, he puts her in the box, nails that shit closed, throws it in the fucking lake... And she's all like, oh, scream, that help me, blah, 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 this is so funny, I'm like, wink, wink, Kieran, and he's just like, all right, bitch. And he just leaves her in there. Uh, Zoe could very well be dead, but that does not make me wrong, and it does not make anybody who still has the balls to choose her wrong. It's just that the killer reveal will be, this person was the killer, but they died. You know? Again, that's pretty slick. That's something we really haven't seen too many times before. So yeah, that's what I think it is. It's Kieran and Zoe for all the reasons I just said. 
and Kieran just killed half the killing team in this last episode. So, these next, what, two episodes or whatever are just going to be one killer who's Kieran, then be revealed, and blah, blah, blah. And here's the other thing, is that the way that this carries on to other seasons is that Kieran's really only tied to uh, thinking that there was Piper and the accomplice and Zoe. So he knows Piper's dead. He's going to go after Audrey and he just killed Zoe. So he thinks it's all over with. So when he dies at the end of this season without being able to kill Audrey, then, you know what I mean? Nothing's really like connected. So this is the thing is everybody's everything that he knows and we know so far is connected at the top of the pyramid by Piper. Piper's like the boss of Audrey. Piper's the boss of Zoe. And then Zoe was the boss of Kieran, let's say. Okay, here's the thing. Season 3 and the final season and whatever seasons it ends up, we'll find out who is the one who is controlling Piper, which is what we're getting into with Sheriff Miguel and Daisy and Maddox and Kevin Duvall and evidently from Brandon James alive. Whoa, who saw that coming? But anyway, we'll get into more of that like in the next episode and stuff like that. This episode's review. Like I said, I'm not going to recap it, but I'm going to review it. Holy shit, this was a good fucking episode. It, well, I forgot to look up who the writer is. Please forgive me. But it was directed by, and I can't pronounce their names, Kevin and Dennis Wiedemeyer and Coach or whatever. They, are, they directed what is probably one of my favorite, 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 favorite horror movies out recently called Starry Eyes. If you haven't seen that, check that shit out ASAP. Starry Eyes is amazing. Check it out, check it out, check it out. They did an awesome job in this episode. There was like, a combination of the cool shots that Scream has ever had. Like, I could do a whole, like, commentary dissection on all the cool filmmaking tricks that they did, how they shot all that stuff, like, quote-unquote, in the box or whatever, and, like, how Zoe was, like, floating above Noah and was, like, coming in and out of his face. What they did, this is just an example, there's a bunch of this stuff in here, is they sat them up forward, you know, they put a piece of wood, which was supposed to be the bottom of the box, they put that on the wall, had uh, John Carno plays Noah stand up against that wood, and then they had her on a movable platform coming in and out of his face, and then you turn that footage sideways so it looks like she's drifting up and down because her hair never falls, nothing on her ever falls forward. They were just back and forth standing, uh, you know, vertically to each other. Bunch of cool tricks, filled with cool tricks. So anyway, very good episode. I definitely need to watch this shit again. Um, I only watched it once because, again, it wasn't about the recap or the really killer theories. This is broad killer theories. And on the next episode, I'm going to go into episode specific, and I'll do the recaps, and it'll be a lot funnier, and I'll do voices and all this kind of stuff. But like I said, this one was serious. We need to get the shit out of the way. And so let me just wrap up by saying, very good episode, potentially one of the best episodes ever, although... What takes it down in my eyes is that there was no brook. How the fuck was there no brook in an episode of Scream, let alone this episode? <sighs> no brook. I just, I can't fathom how there's no brook in an episode. Anyway, but other than that, very good, debatably the best episode of this season, uh, series thus far. Um, so, again, just to wrap up, next week I'll be back. I'll be doing the re full recap of episode 11, episode 12. We'll be doing killer congratulations make sure again just comment two do not comment three comment two you can comment one comment two anyway hope you guys enjoyed this and <laughs> i'll answer some more questions next week or whatever hit me up on twitter if you really want to know some more in-depth stuff or whatever but hopefully this covered everything it's all pretty wild it's all pretty crazy but anyway and I will see you next time uh, for episode 11 here on Fright Flicks. Later on, guys.